How are you going to die? The truth here is that the total energy transmitted cannot be more than the energy received, which means that if a bullet has the force necessary to knock you down, it would also knock down the person firing the gun. And here's, a, here's a simple demonstration. A bullet does not knock you down. Your reaction to the bullet knocks you down. We in okay? Yep. Okay. Let's try and get it right. There it is. Really didn't feel like much, much less than a punch. So there's not much to it. Uh, what happens is, just as Richard once pointed out, if you come up and stick somebody in the ass with a pin, the guy's gonna jump into the air. It's not the force of the pin, it's just your reaction to it. When you're shot, it, upset, it upsets you. It may hit your nerves, you may jump into the air. Well, we've learned a lot about what doesn't work and what isn't real, and by now you must be wondering, well, what bullets are effective and what makes them so? That's what we're gonna get into right now, but first you must understand one very important point. There is no handgun bullet which is guaranteed to stop a person with one shot, regardless of caliber, velocity, or bullet type. You can never, never assume that one shot will cause sudden incapacitation. The overall destructive power of a handgun bullet, any bullet, is too low, and the human body is just too tough and unpredictable. Now here's an example. This man was shot in the face just under his right eye with a 240 grain, 44 caliber magnum bullet. The distance from the end of the barrel to his face was no more than about 16 inches away. The muzzle blast blew out his eye. The bullet entered his face and exited behind his ear. Now, this man lived long enough to crawl to his car a half block away and try to get in it when the police arrived several minutes later. Now he did eventually die, but the point is that had he been armed, and he wasn't, he could possibly have returned fire. Dr. Vincent DeMeo, a chief medical examiner in Texas, reported an interesting case in his book on gunshot wounds of a young man who was hit in the left chest from three to four feet with a 12-gauge shotgun firing number seven and a half shot. His heart, the doctor wrote, was literally shredded, yet he was able to run some 65 feet before falling over. Now the point of these examples is to give you a very clear understanding that true instant incapacitation is a relatively rare occurrence. Don't ever count on it. Now that we've established that fact, let's examine the question of what makes a bullet effective. There are several elements, but the first and most obvious is size, and for a very simple reason. The larger a bullet, the better chance it has of hitting something important inside. Although this is a simple fact, it seems to have been lost over the years. Think of it this way. If you had to choose a bullet diameter from, say, 22, which is about a quarter inch, all the way up to 10 inches in diameter, without regard for recoil, range, practicality, etc., if you were just going to choose a size, wouldn't you choose the largest, the 10 inch? Imagine this, if you will. It's the future, and you're a spaceman facing an armed bad guy. Your laser pistol has only one shot left but you can select the diameter of your laser beam from 22 caliber, like a quarter inch, all the way up to, say, 10 inches across. Now, would you rather burn a 22 caliber hole in your enemy or a 10 inch hole? Of course, the larger hole is better as it is much more likely to destroy something important. Now, with conventional firearms, we don't have that much of a choice, but the rule still holds that the bigger the hole, the more damage you're going to do. So you want to use the largest diameter bullet you can. The next most important element in effective bullet design and selection is penetration. Now, a bullet cannot be effective unless it is able to penetrate deeply enough to have the potential to hit the large blood vessels which lie deep inside the body. Effective penetration must be such that a coat, button, notebook, arm, thick layers of fat, bone, or an angled shot will not prevent the bullet from achieving sufficient penetration. And penetration is directly related to what? Remember? Weight, bullet weight. If you said velocity, rewind this tape and start over. Yes, the heavier a bullet is, the deeper it can penetrate. So now we're at the point where we want a large, heavy bullet. Once the reasons for that are understood, and I hope they are at this point, we can talk about bullet types. Now, there are many. There are solid lead, round-nosed lead, lead hollow points, 
jacketed hollow points, wad cutter, full metal jackets, fragmenting, to mention a few. But all these can generally be reduced to three types, solid, expanding, and fragmenting. The fragmenting bullets, like the safety slug, do not have sufficient penetration. They almost invariably come apart near the surface of the skin, and that leaves us with the other two groups, the solid and the expanding. And herein lies a dilemma. Solid bullets are good, but an expanding bullet would seem to be the best choice because by expanding upon contact with tissue, the bullet you started with becomes physically bigger and therefore more effective. You start with this, in one case of a good expanding bullet, and end up with this, an increase of about 80%. Expanding bullets are excellent in theory, but in practice there's often a problem. They don't do what they're supposed to do. They often don't expand. There are many recorded cases in which a hollow point will expand sometimes and fail to do so in others. And there are other bullets which are known never to expand in tissue. Here you see five 38 caliber bullets taken from a body during autopsy. These were the 158 grain plus P lead hollow points fired from a two and a half inch barreled Smith & Wesson Model 66. This x-ray shows four of the bullets inside the torso. And this x-ray shows the fifth bullet in the forearm near the wrist. Some of these bullets hit bone and some did not. But what you see here is very typical of the type of deformation encountered in bullets taken from bodies. While there was some expansion, most of what you see is really deformation, not perfect symmetrical expansion like you'll get in duct seal, water, or ballistic gelatin. Now, not only is it difficult to predict the performance of any one brand and caliber of hollow point bullet, but the manufacturers often change the internal design of their bullets without notice, as well as the alloy content in different production runs, which will cause great variations in performance. And they don't bother telling you this kind of stuff. Hollow points are great when they work, but there's an additional problem inherent in their design. If you had a hollow point bullet, which expanded to many times its original diameter, its massive frontal area, if it expanded really big, if it started this, this big and expanded to this big, the hollow point, the new massive frontal area, would prevent it from penetrating very far. The hollow point bullet design is a very difficult art, and I don't envy those involved in it. But the, the type of bullets we have today are really not very effective. There's a lot of room for improvement in hollow point bullets. Now, there's probably someone out there right now asking, but what about velocity? Well, velocity is certainly an element in bullet effectiveness but it is of only secondary importance. And let me explain. You, of course, need enough velocity to send a bullet to its target. And with a hollow point or other expanding bullet, you need a minimum velocity to cause the bullet to expand. But the important thing to remember is, beyond those two requirements, any increase in velocity is really unnecessary. All you'll get is a bigger muzzle blast and increased recoil. When you think of velocity, you should think in terms of what's the lowest velocity I can use effectively, not the highest. Now, I know that many of you velocity freaks out there are squirming in your seats and suffering withdrawal symptoms. But you should think about what's been presented here. And I know how you feel because I, too, was a true believer in high-velocity bullets. Whatever the velocity of a bullet was, I wanted one faster. But the facts are what the facts are, and I couldn't deny it. And you shouldn't either. So have you guessed the overall secret of bullet effectiveness yet? If you haven't, I'll tell you. What really makes a bullet effective is where it hits, what exactly the bullet destroys. Now, I told you about the man who took that monster three-pound, two-inch diameter projectile completely through the body. Why wasn't he killed? Because the projectile did not hit anything vital. Major vessels, heart, spine, or brain. That is why. Now, I'm going to show you two very graphic examples. This man died by an accidental discharge while he was cleaning his guns. Yes, he probably thought the gun was empty. He took a bullet directly into the center of his chest and was, the investigators believe, instantly incapacitated or killed. Note the fact that he did not even uncross his legs or try to get up after being shot. 
The bullet he took was a target load, a, a 38 caliber, 148 grain wad cutter. Usually travels about 700 feet per second. In another case, a suicide, a man shot himself with a 45 caliber, 230 grain, full metal jacketed bullet directly in the chest. For those interested, you can note the tissue in the barrel and the bushy marks under the wound. He was not instantly incapacitated. 